What's happening, hobby people? My name is Jacob with the Dry Paint Pot, and if you look around your workspace right now, you'll probably notice some kind of crusty, disgusting tool that you've neglected. So this week, I'm gonna teach you how to take care of those tools, clean them properly, so you can save a bit of money. So stick around. So I've been miniature painting for about three and a half years now, and for around two and a half of those years, I seriously mistreated my hobby supplies. I rarely cleaned my palette, I never washed my water cup, and I rarely cleaned my brushes with soap. Now because of this, my brushes would go bad very fast, and I had to replace them quite often. And since I was replacing brushes at such a rapid rate, I never felt compelled to really invest in a nice brush. With that, a lot of my brushes had frayed tips and it made my painting suffer. So it wasn't until the last year that I really started taking care of my supplies. And not only has it made those items last longer, but it's also helped my painting tremendously. I notice a huge difference in the quality of my work and also I'm saving a ton of money. So hopefully this video today will help you take care of your supplies properly so you can save some money and instead invest in some new models. So let's get things started. So this is my water cup, and it's actually not very dirty right now. I recently cleaned it, but the reason why we want to keep it clean is one, if you just rinse this with water, you'll notice that uh, paint and other dried up bits will collect at the bottom. And when you stir your brush in there, you don't want those to get kicked up and um, catch on your brush, because then you'll transfer that over to your model and add texture to the model, which is terrible. Also, you never want to use old water because as you see, this is quite green or brown. And if you use this to water down some white scar, you're going to tint your white paint. If we need to use white paint, we want it to be white, not green. That's obvious. So we're going to bring this over to the sink and I'm going to show you how I get this clean. It is very easy to clean your water cup. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is dump out your old water. And you can see we have all this old paint collecting at the bottom. So go ahead and give that a few rinses. Back in the day, I would look at this and I would call it clean. But as you see, we have a ring of paint all around this and all that needs to come out. So what we next wanna do is just grab some paper towel or a brush or whatever you have that you can use to scrape out some of this paint and just scrub away at all of that. Now that we're done with that, we next wanna take a paper towel and put it right inside of the cup and just dig it around and scrape all the sides because although it looked clean, there is still some color left inside of there. Next, we just wanna give that a rinse and we're done. Now this is my wet palette, and it's really nothing fancy, it's your average wet palette, but if you take a look, you'll notice that I have a lot of lint and little hairs and dust and everything else in there, and it's because I've had this wet palette going for probably about a month and a half now, and it needs to be cleaned. So you definitely want to clean your wet palette once it starts getting to this point because you're going to run your brush along these paints and it's going to pick up all of this little dust and hairs and whatever else falls into your palette. And that's going to transfer then onto your model. If we take a look at my Space Marine right here, I noticed it was time to clean that thing because, I don't know if you can, um, if you can see it, but his sword right here, his chain sword, it has a couple little specks. There we go, you can just see the texture in there from the paint. So to clean this, it's very easy. We just want to bring this over the sink and I'll show you how to do it. Cleaning a wet palette is just a little bit trickier than cleaning a water cup. So the first thing we want to do is separate the pieces. So you have your paper, you have your sponge, and then the palette itself. So what a lot of people don't know is you can reuse this palette paper. It is reusable, but you just need to wash it. 
Now mine is going dry, I accidentally left it open for too long. So what we're gonna do is just scrub away any of the old paint. I like to use a very hot water to do this and just get as much of it off as we can. And now we're going to clean the sponge. So with this, I don't really care if it gets stained, so long as the stain color isn't transferring onto our palette paper. So just wanna scrape off any of the uh, crusty chunks without ripping the sponge. And go ahead and just give this a nice bath in some hot water. This is also a good time to take your palette and throw it on into the hot water as well and let that soak. This way, if there's any crusty parts on here, you can just pick them off once they go soft. All right, so we went ahead and washed off any of the wet paint that was on here, but we still have some pieces that have dried on that are a little crusty. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and soak that in some very hot water along with our palette and our sponge. Now, this hot water is going to disinfect the sponge and it's also gonna make any of the dry paint that's on the palette easier to peel off. Now, it's good to use hot water because you'll sometimes notice some mold that'll appear on your palette paper and you wanna go ahead and kill that off, especially if it's living in your sponge. So go ahead and just fill a sink full of some hot water, soak everything just for a little bit, and then take this out, peel off any of the dry bits, and you should be all clean. All right, so now after letting that soak and peeling off any of the dry bits, we can see that this is nice and clean. And you can tell by running your finger along any of the spots that once had paint and seeing if any of it transfers, which when we run our finger along the brown and the yellow, it doesn't go anywhere. So this is mostly just stained. Uh, just to play it safe, I do like using the same colors in the spots where there already is like a dried color there. So for instance, this stain right here is corn red. So now I'll just use corn red in this area just in case any of it does leach onto the paint. I've never had that happen to me, but you never know. Go ahead and throw the sponge back in there. Wet your sponge depending on how much water you like to use. Now, if you don't know how much water to use, I can make a wet palette video in the future, just let me know. And then we want to just take our palette paper and lay it on in, and then dry it accordingly. But now our palette is all set to hold some new color. Out of all the things that we're going to look at today, paintbrushes are definitely the most difficult to care for. Now the trouble with these is that improper use and a lack of cleaning will make the hairs spread. So you can see right here that these are all spread apart. You'll see on this one, it's very disgusting. They're splitting, they've broken. And if you see on this one, it doesn't even really bend. So this is the ferrule, this part of the brush right here. And what we don't want to happen is paint to get from the bristles into the ferrule, to this part right here. And a good example of this is this brush right here. You see that buildup right there? That's what we do not want. That is absolutely terrible for the brush. And what that does is as it dries, it pushes the bristles apart and makes them spread and split, and then you lose your fine tip. So we're first going to look at how to properly load your brush with paint. And then I'm going to show you how to clean your brushes with just brush soap and regular hand soap. And then I'm going to show you a trick to bring some of these dead brushes back to life. So let's take a look at this brush that I got from Green Stuff World. It has a very nice tip to it. And as you see, there is no buildup around the ferrule. So when you're using this brush or any brush, what you want to first do is get your brush to a nice point. So you can just dip it in some water. And then what you do is you lay it into the crease of your hand right here. You close slightly, twist, and you'll get a nice point. And now just go to whatever color that you're going to use. So let's say it's this blue right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get paint just at the dark part of this brush. So as you see here, the bristles are darkest from the tip all the way to about here, about a third of the way up the brush. And that's where we want to keep paint. We don't want paint to go halfway up the brush or higher because it will eventually get into the ferrule. So while I'm painting, I just get a little bit of paint on the tip of my brush. And as you see, that's as far up as we want it to go, no higher. And this is a perfect amount of paint to work with. It will definitely go a long way. Now I'm going to use an older brush, a little more beat up one, to show you what not to do. And this is something that I was doing for the longest time. I would get my paint, and you see right here, I would turn my brush to the side and grab a bunch of it. Now already, 
you can see that we've gone way too high up the bristles. And then when I would lay it down, I would spin it like that, and we almost have it up to the ferrule. Then I would take my brush, mix the paint, and while I'm mixing it, we're gonna look a little closer, I would sort of mash my bristles and spin. And right now, I am doing the worst thing for these brushes. I'm just loading it up. And it's crazy, this thing is so beat up that the paint isn't even going any higher up the bristles because they are so damaged. So this is what we do not want to do with our brushes. It will dry out the bristles in the ferrule, it will split your brush, and it will force you to have to replace your brushes very often. Now let's bring these brushes over to the sink and I'll show you how to get them clean. So getting your brushes clean is a little bit tricky. If you have a brush that isn't too damaged, you wanna just clean it like this. Get yourself some brush cleaner, or you can use standard dish soap, but I like to use this brush cleaner because as you see, it is brush cleaner and preserver. It also conditions the bristles. So what we wanna do is pop this open, get your brush wet, and then we just wanna work it in a little spot and get it a little sudsy. There we go. And just by moving our brush around, you can see that it's already starting to turn a little red, a little brown, and that's getting any of the paint that was in our bristles out. So just wanna work that a little bit. And then massage the soap into the bristles. Now we don't wanna work it too hard into our palm and really mash it because that's going to make all the bristles uh, split and fray. And that's what we do not want to happen. So go ahead and just work this into your brush and rinse it. Now do that over and over again until you work it into the soap and you don't see any more color appearing. Once you work it into the soap and no more color is coming out of the brush, you know it's clean. So now what we wanna do is rinse it and then I'll show you a little trick that I like to do. First, take your brush soap and take some paper towel, wipe out any of the dirty paint that might've transferred onto the soap. And with your slightly damp brush, just dip it into your uh, brush cleaner a little bit and then run it into your palm like so and let it hold a nice tip. Now this will train your bristles to stay together and will hopefully help them from splitting anytime soon. Now that we cleaned a healthy brush, let's try this with a really nasty old brush. So if you just add a little bit of water and work it on into the soap, uh, you probably can't see it, but I'm sort of just carving into the soap. The bristles aren't really moving like a normal brush would, so I'm just working this in here. Now with this, since it is so beat up, I'm just gonna run this into my palm and sort of just work it like a normal brush, just back and forth, and you can see just how filthy this is. So we're gonna keep doing that over and over again, working the soap into the bristles, twirling it around your hand, and just get all of that paint that's inside of your brush out. Now this brush is much cleaner than it originally was, but we definitely have some soap in the ferrule. You can tell because it's much darker down here on the bristles, so I'd imagine that it's collected down here, and also the same goes for this brush right here that I've yet to clean. So now I'm gonna show you how to deep clean these brushes and really get any of the leftover paint out of them. So I'd like to warn you that this method is very harsh and you should only be used on synthetic brushes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use 80% isopropyl alcohol to soak our brushes for about an hour or two and let any of that leftover paint come out. So what we do is just get some isopropyl alcohol take your Beyond Repair brush and soak it on in there. Now this method is very harsh and it can make your bristles snap or ruin your brushes. So use this as a last resort for brushes that are just Beyond Repair. But as you can see, just dipping this brush into the alcohol, it's already loosening up all this old paint. And another bad thing about using alcohol is if you let your brushes soak for too long, it might dissolve some of the glue that's in the ferrule that holds the handle to the ferrule and the brushes inside. So again, don't try this with your good brushes. All right, so these brushes have been soaking for 45 minutes. I was originally going to let them soak for 30 minutes, but some lady outside started screaming about how her man's been cheating on her and he's been texting other bitches and that he was talking to other girls while they were going to Top Golf or some mini golf place. Are you, are you texting? And why the f are you still texting bitches? Who are you playing with? I swear to God in my life, I can't make this stuff up. That's what was going on outside of my window like two minutes ago. So 
Now that it's finally settled down a little bit, we can take a look at these brushes. And as you see, after soaking in the alcohol, these things are much cleaner. I mean, it actually moves, which is incredible. So we're gonna wanna give this just a nice little rinse. Okay, get all that alcohol off. And now we just wanna go ahead and put this back into the brush soap and conditioner and give it one more good wash. And now that that's done, this is what we're left with. It is much cleaner and I can still use this for washing or doing anything that doesn't require a lot of details, maybe a little bit of basing. Now let's go take a look at that brush that was uh, totally black and stiff. And as you see, it is much better. It actually moves. Now it's a little dark still at the bottom, but that's no big deal. And I wasn't sure how this brush was gonna turn out, but it's much cleaner, much, much, much cleaner. Definitely continue to use this. Shoot, I could even use this for some detail work. It's really not that bad anymore. And this brush was the most crusted. As you see, it still has some paint there at the bottom, but what's nice is it's all loosened up so we can just run our nail along the bottom like this. Just give it a good scrape. And all that excess paint is just gonna come right off. After a good soak, rinse, and wash, this thing is all clean and we can definitely continue to use it. Again, do not do this to all of your brushes. It is a very harsh way to get them clean, but it's for any brush that is at the point of no return. Now all of our tools are clean and we can be sure that whatever we paint from here on out will be as good as it can possibly be. Now be sure to wash your water cup after each use. Keep your eye out for mold on your wet palette and clean it occasionally and wash your brushes after each use. And if you do those things, you can make these tools last for a very long time and not have to worry about replacing them anytime soon. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my patrons, Leandrist, Che Phillips, CK, and The Dark Path. Thank you all so very much for your support. It's your help that keeps these videos coming each week. And if you also like to support the channel, check out the link to my Patreon down low. And if you like to just hang out and talk about the hobby, I'll also drop a link to my Discord down low too. Now let's check out this week's viewer submissions. So these bases are by CCrazy420, and it's been really fun watching these things all come together. I wish you the best of luck with the water effects. I've seen a few of the bases that you've done that with so far and they look really cool. So I can't wait to see these all complete. And I also can't wait to see these models painted. I think at the end of it, they're gonna look stunning. Now, this is really cool. This is by Che Gavesa and he's been working on this for a little while now. And since I don't have any terrain or anything like that, it's always really exciting to see what people can put together. I love to try my hand at something like this, but I think in the meantime, I'll just watch the experts do it. So this is for the Dark Elf Dare, and I don't know too much about that. I don't know if it's a uh, competition or anything like that, but if it is, I wish you the best of luck because this is really coming along. And again, it's just so cool to see the type of things that people can make. Now this Scorpec Lord is by Wargaming Dude, and he's been teasing this model for, uh, I think it was like a week. And now all of the photos are finally out and available. I am so happy with how it turned out. Your pictures are looking amazing. It's a major improvement, you can really appreciate all the work that you've put into this model. I love how vibrant all the greens are on the weapons. And I like that you went for a red armor rather than the classic brass. It's a fantastic work and I can't wait to see the rest of your Necrons complete. Feel free to share any of your work with me both on Instagram and Facebook at The Dry Paint Pot because I pick my favorites each week and I feature them in my upcoming videos. Now wash your brushes, clean your paint pots, and keep on painting.